welcome to my YouTube channel. I am reading the book His Enemy, His Friend by John R. Tunis. And in this video, I'm going to be reading chapter 6, 7, and 8. Because chapter 6 is only like literally two pages. Two pages and a half. So why not fit three chapters in this? So there's probably three parts in this. Or even two. Um, but yeah. So I hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Let me know what other books I should read. Um, I'm trying to start on this kind of YouTube channel thing. But yeah. And then I'm also on TikTok too. So yeah. So let's get to it. Chapter 6. Um, and I'm also bad at, like, language, like, I don't really, it's hard for me to read, but I'm wasting your time, so let me get into this, I already wasted a minute. Alright, so the schoolmaster, re chapter 6, the schoolmaster replaced the black notebook in his pocket and resumed his seat at the iron table. Here we are, coming to a crisis in the war, and she wants news of her great-grandson one of god knows how many foreigners forced to work for the germans well i suppose he is all she has at this moment the f field level hanes clipboard in his hand strolled up in w in warm weather to the two often met at noon and the sergeant usually offered the teacher to teacher a glass of german beer which was reserved by the pardon of the cafe for the German soldiers who had to sign for it. The Fabuebel, wiping his face, sat down. The stray dog, still accompanying him, also sat down panting. Hot, very hot, remarked the German. Then to the ripe. Hartor. Two beers, please. Mon Lavarin wiped the corner of the table with his dirty white apron. Marcy, said the teacher. It be in. What's new today? Are we ready for the invasion? At time, he enjoyed needing, needling the young German. Your compirates act. As though they expected it this afternoon at the least act. These frontline furiosos, they are impossible. Also drilling, shouting at each other. Saluting, frankly, my friend, I am spectacal about your invasion. Perhaps, yes, it is possible. But look at that blockhouse over there. Nothing can wreck it. Nothing you saw it build yourself. There are ten meters of solid concrete over those guns. Tell me, what shells could penetrate the depth? He took a large swallow of the beer, enjoying his own beer as the guest of the... Oh my god, the R word. The raw... The R... And one not permanent by the German army regulations to drink it. Mon Varn did not care to contradict his host. But he did not hesitate to voice his doubt. Ah, uh, oi, you may be right. But after all, my friend, things haven't been going too well for you people lately. Only has... One only, oh my gosh, one has only to look at the map. They tell the story of what's happening over there on the eastern front. The fundamental did not wish to betray the lack of confidence before the Frenchman. So he said, ha ha, ho ho, let the English come. We are ready for them. The teacher nodded, but he wondered daily. He read between the lines of the censored Paris press and followed the map with attention. As he 
often told to climate <sighs> okay, um, climate sorry uh climate when oh my god settlement when they were alone those maps indicated plain an extent of impeding dangers disaster for the germans it's coming he told himself i only want to be here to see it and surely he thought it it must come before long or it will be too late after four years of commission of hardships and privation temper in the village were rising that little girl who choked to death last month because no doctor could get through the coastal road the thin legs of the boys and girls on the street when you see your children go to bed hungry night after night sorry guys um night after night well a man will do anything and those strange warships spotted off the coast. When the fog lifted suddenly one afternoon, um, what were they doing? Those massive flights of planes on their daily bombing runs from England? Were, there, were they pounding the enemy lines of commis- communications to prepare sh- preparation for the intimate invasion? Certainly. The Germans were on the alert, signing the crisis about, abounded. Nogent place was obviously no, no longer a kind of convalescent area for battered troops. It had been transformed by orders from Barlin, of course, into a frontline garrison, the pivotal point of the main coastal defense that was plain and the battle line of Caesalands was here for one purpose to rebel repel an invasion on the beaches somehow the invasion must secede it must said the teacher out loud the end of chapter six and you should take a break get something to drink i'm gonna go on to chapter seven in just a second Alright guys, so I, I think I'm just going to do chapter 6 and 7 in this. Sorry. Um, Alright, because I don't want to have different parts. So, chapter 7. The hobbled man's cellar, new commanding officer of the garrison, sat at his desk in the blotch villa. The windows overlooking the sea were boarded up, and his only company was the photograph of Hitler. A thin sheet of paper was before him. Uh, it was... Oh, yeah. um, it was typewritten. Marked at the top, Glitzman's secret. Below was the heading. Oberkommando. Des Horus. From the Army High Command. This document was about the invasion which the Abar Intelligence Department of the German General Staff felt to be inmated. It outlined the steps being taken to repel the assault of detailed the disposition of troops and reserve the neighborhood of Nagent Plague. The uh, Hauptmann seller was on the telephone. His voice was crisp, soldierly. Ja, Major Kelsar. Ja, Hamole. In an hour or more, Habataman, you will receive alarm struck too. Do you understand? Ja, Ja, Major Kelsar. Of course he understood. Alarm struck number two was the order for the highest state of readiness against the evasion of major continued 
we know nothing for certain, Kopman. But there. Is a rumor well substantiated that the invasion threat is at sea. Perhaps, who knows? I understand, Major. Remember, Nahan Plag is a provincial position in the defense of the coast. Jaha, Herman, Major. We are ready. My troops are veterans. We won't be caught asleep. Good. Heal, Hitler. The Major ring off. But the Hotman was perturbed. Pre-tarbed. He rose and stalked the room. A former Flebel promoted the commission rank by the field of battle in North Africa. He was a fussy, myomic little man with a thick glasses, a strict disciplinarian who strutted with authority. He was also a brave officer, was a decoration from his campaigns in the desert showed a month before he had been sent in with his salesman uh, to take over the reorganized the defense of Nogent Plague. But the situation he had found was worse than he had imagined until he arrived. Nobody seemed alert and disciplined with indifferent. Then there was that fled Webble, the invasion, immunement, the fatherland, and very greatest pearl. And what is he doing? Playing football with the boys? Great greeting civilians in the street? True. The town was quiet for the moment. Yet, with all the terrorists about one, could never tell. The hot man trusted nobody, and experience told him this was the wise attitude in war. Although his men all said the Fetterman level was the great football star, this nonsense must end. The captain, whose fattish body and thick glasses betrayed the fact that he could not run across the street or see a football unless it hit him in the face, was determined to maintain discipline. So insensual in the moment of crisis, furiously he shuffled the papers on his desk. Paperwork was his soul, his goal, his be all, his end all. All the surgeon he had been celebrated for his impeachable reports, always forwarded through channels, always on time, large forms, legal, legible, correctly indented, and set along the superior were his beliefs and marks of professional officer paperwork he often told his men was the other seldom seen side of discipline as for the lazy fundamental it made no difference and he was a great centurion forward germany ever had where we're at war i'm in charge here and the troops and the townspeople had better realized it the more he reflected about the fundamental, the more annoyed he became that sloppy soldier popularity with the troops. And worse still, the townsfolk was a cause of concern for Haltman. Why? He thought everyone knows like us that, but for his family connections, he would have been reduced for the ranks a long, long ago. In any event, it is my duty at his superior officer to report the insincency of Abercommando at Cien. Let them do as they wish, and they will have to do something after they hear from me. I shall 
make a point of telephoning this morning, but first I must have it out with him. Count Von Unzu, what's his name? Under nonsense, the title business. Four years. Now he has been anno- enjoying himself in the safety of this charming seaside resort. While I was up on my neck in the sandstorm, fighting the Rommel in North Africa and promoted from the ranks of the general Pyre Lin himself. He seized the telephone and called the blockhouse beyond the village. Utter frizz. Oh my gosh. Okay. Clint, he said cur- curtly. The soldier at the other end of the line, feeling tenseness in the voice of his commanding officer, informed him that the fundamental had left some minutes ago with the morning report, which should have been on my desk. When I came to the office at seven o'clock today, said the hapt man, potentially is the first duty of a soldier. All right, so I'm going to do part two on this book, and part two is going to start on uh, page 44 the next time I read to you guys. So I'll be right back.